If deer are consistently looking at your cameras, there's a problem. If deer are consistently avoiding your cameras, there's a problem. That could be the camera, that could be you, could be the set. But the bottom line is, eliminate the variables and have more success. Since 2015, we've been running a ton of trail cameras. Arguably, more trail cameras than anyone in the world outside of academia studies. With hunting in mind, our goal is always to collect the most accurate data points as possible. We don't want deer staring at our cameras, we don't want deer skirting our cameras, and we don't want to negatively influence natural deer movement with our cameras. So over the years, with millions and millions of data points, we've really refined the process that we take to hanging our trail cameras, and we've came up with a spook-proof equation. In the spook-proof equation, step one is camera height. Hang your cameras six to eight feet so they're out of the line of sight of whitetails. We like six to eight feet and not any higher because it doesn't limit the detection ability of the camera. Once you get your cameras over that 10 foot mark, 10, 12, 13, 14 feet, they're high enough where you have to physically angle them down for the cameras to work. So what you're doing is basically creating a static environment and isolating that detection area of that specific camera. Step two, hang your cameras on trees that are larger in diameter than the profile of the camera. Or best case scenario, hang your cameras in split trunk trees where it eliminates the side profile. All we're trying to do here is decrease the likelihood of that camera visually being seen by whitetails. A lot like hanging tree stands. Put some thought into what type of tree, what size of tree that you're physically hanging your cameras on. Step number three, ditch the strap. Over the last couple of years, we've really moved towards paracord or at least the third party mount moving away from your typical nylon straps. And this does a couple, basically two things. One, it eliminates the 360 degree visibility of the camera, both for whitetails and humans. So not only are you decreasing the likelihood of that camera seeing, being seen by whitetails, but also people. More than likely when you come back to that camera, it's not gonna be gone. Keep in mind when you're using paracord, make sure you're making the set neat. Tie up those loose ends. You don't want straps or paracord or some rope blowing around in a wind, making added movement, making that camera more noticeable. So be neat. With cell cameras becoming more and more popular, there's a lot of guys running external power sources or booster antennas with these cellular cameras. With the added pieces of equipment on the set, you have to take extra precaution. One of the things that we do with all of our solar panel setups is we mount that panel in the opposite plane or 180 degrees opposite of that camera. So from any one direction, there's only one visible piece of equipment in that setup that could be seen possibly. Distance from your target area. This is where we see a lot of folks make mistakes. This is where we've made a lot of mistakes. At the end of the day, if you're worried about getting consistent, accurate data on deer, you do not want these cameras in the face of deer. If you are after cool videos, cool pictures, different angles, yeah, put them in the face of deer. If you're not worried about, you know, being intrusive with these things, go for it. But at the end of the day, if you're worried about hunting, if you're trying to collect data, that is accurate to help you fill tags, you need to take some precaution of how close and where you're hanging your trail cameras. The distance that we like for our camera specifically is somewhere between 20 and 25 feet. We're not gonna go find an active fresh community or primary scrape and throw that camera five feet away from it. That's not our goal. So take the time, get your camera set up 20, 25 feet, and I think that you'll find that camera is going to go a lot less noticeable. Right now, at the end of the season, postseason is a great time to kind of go through all your trail camera pictures. Take the time, go through your data, see how many deer are physically looking at your cameras. If there's snow on the ground, go out and scout those areas. See how many deer are physically walking around your trail camera setups. Because at the end of the day, all of this information is just to help make your cameras less noticeable to deer so you can be more successful.